the doctors have read it. What's something you've had to tell a patient that you thought for sure was common knowledge? Story 1. I've had to inform a few male patients that the condom only goes on the shaft and should not be pulled down to include covering of the testicles. Story 2. How a shorter, fatter 5 milliliter oral syringe held more volume than a skinnier and longer 1 milliliter oral syringe. How does this hold more liquid when it's shorter? Also, I've seen almost every incorrect way to use an inhaler upside down being fairly common. People taking birth control pills only on the days they have intimacy. I no longer assume anything as common knowledge. I'd rather have someone be offended that I explained something basic than to have something awful happen because I assumed the patient knew something. Story 3. After putting a few stitches in a middle-aged guy's scalp, the family asked if he was okay. The attending joked that his brain was still inside. The family were stunned by this news. I, the medical student, spent the next half hour informing the family that the brain was inside the skull and that a person couldn't live without one. They thought that the brain was just a turn of phrase to reflect a person's common sense rather than an actual organ. Sort of the same as what they thought about the heart. Story 4. I'm not a doctor but I'm a nurse. I had a patient come in for an STD check. She was very upset and continued to tell me that she only had one partner progressing through my assessment. She further divulged that even if he was sleeping with other people, it shouldn't matter because he uses a condom every time and he makes sure to wash it thoroughly after every use. I asked what she meant when she said he washes it after every use. She explained that he washed the condom with hot water and soap before he used said condom again. I had to explain to her that condoms are a one-time use product. She had no clue. Story 5. My dad is a family doctor in the States. A woman came in for a well baby check with her six month old and she had what looked like chocolate milk in the baby's bottle. So he started explaining to her as kindly as he could that she shouldn't be giving her baby chocolate milk, at which point she interrupts him and says, oh, that isn't chocolate milk, it's coffee. He just loves it. Story 6. If you're going to put it in your butt, make sure it has a flared base or is attached to something you won't lose your grip on. Corollary, if you've already lost something in your butt, don't lie to the triage nurse and then medical team. While your story is usually amusing, we don't really care how it ended up in there. Story 7. Pediatric nurse here. I've told more than one parent that their infants should not be drinking Dr. Pepper out of their bottle or any other vessel for that matter. Viagra does not prevent STDs or pregnancy. Story 8. Not a doctor, but a paramedic. During clinical time in the ER, 17-year-old came in with a bloody rectum anus. Apparently, she wasn't wiping after using the bathroom, and it was basically really bad diaper rash. So the nurse had to call social services and explain to this girl proper wiping. Story 9. I'm a veterinary technician. I once had to explain to a client that the ticks she had been frantically trying to remove from her male dog's belly with tweezers were actually his nipples. I also told her she had an extremely well-behaved patient dog. Story 10 not a doctor, I ran in the ICU. I've seen some really stupid people over the years, but a few weeks ago a patient's family member got into a verbal altercation with me over the fact that I was trying to freeze his mother to death. He kept pointing to the digital thermostat, displaying a temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. We're in the US, by the way. When I gently explained to him that 23 degrees Celsius is not at all cold, he just kept pointing to the display and shouting, you don't think 23 degrees is cold. It's 23 freaking degrees in here and acting insane. After multiple attempts to explain to him what Celsius is by myself, the charge nurse, house supervisor, and security, we finally gave up and had him escorted out. He was a man in at least his late 30s who's graduate high school and had never heard of Celsius and Fahrenheit. He literally thought we were making it up in an attempt to conceal my efforts to freeze his intubated, critically ill mother to death. Story 11. Slightly graphic warning, another vet here. Dead bodies decompose. If you leave your dead dog euthanized in the back of your car on the hottest day of the year, don't come crying to me when its belly fills with putrefying gases and bursts. Demanding I cover the costs of reupholstering your car might be considered a little rude as well. Story 12. I hospital is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for medical emergencies. So the next time you have a stroke on Friday, come in on Friday and don't wait for the weekend to pass. Story 13. A child cannot have inherited any genetic traits from someone the mother has previously been with. Only one man is the biological father. Story 14. My wife and I were trying to get pregnant and due to possible complications, we were talking to an obstetrician. Towards the end of the visit, he tells us, in all seriousness, just so you guys know, 
You have to stop using condoms if you want to get pregnant. We just stare at him a bit and say, oh, obviously, and he just shakes his head and says, you'd be surprised. There's been a few couples that really didn't realize that. Story 15. My grandmother was the ignorant one getting and explaining. She was 18 and in labor with her first child. She was the kind of lady to wear pants in the late 40s. The nurse looked her up and down and told her to put on the labor clothes. So she took off her top and bra and got on the bed. The nurse is really confused. Take off your pants too. Why? It comes out my belly button, right? Asked grandma. No, darling. It comes out the way he came in. Story 16. Your nurse here had to explain to a 27-year-old female that this bleeding she was having for a week, every month was normal and why. She had two children, by the way. Story 17. My mother is a nurse and has been for over 25 years. The only story of hers that makes me sick is the story of a man who could not afford Viagra. So he reasoned his cock gun should do the trick, right? It'd stay in there and keep him ready. So he put the tip of the gun in his urethra and filled himself up. Long story short, don't do that. Don't. For Christ's sake, ever do anything even remotely like that. Story 18. Podiatrist buddy told me this one. Lady has to have foot amputated and is given waiver forms to sign pre-op. But he asks if she needs time to think about it. She's very nonchalant and doesn't seem to care much what they do. He gets suspicious and probes a bit as to why she's not more concerned. She says she gets that they have to operate and it's okay because the foot will grow back. He then has to explain she's not a salamander. Things get a bit more serious. Okay. But like, salamanders are cool. Imagine if we could regrow our limbs like salamanders, that'd be sick. Story 19. Not a doctor, but a nutritionist. I work with a lot of different patients, and I have tons of stories about food stupidity. Had a lady have bariatric surgery. Your stomach gets surgically stapled smaller, and her mother kept trying to force her to eat real food. The day of the surgery, when she was on a liquid diet, she would eat it, puke, Rip her stitches out, repeat. We had to ban the mother from seeing her because she would literally blackmail and guilt trip this bull lady into eating a whole pizza, barf it all up because her popo surgery stomach couldn't handle it and end up ripping out stitches and causing enormous pain because her mother was positive that she would die if she was on a liquid diet for a couple days. Another lady I was seeing for clinicals was diabetic and she would come in every week with stupid high blood sugar levels. 250 to 260 ish, not knowing why they were so high. She kept a record of everything she looted, and all of her food intake seemed fine. One day, her husband came with her, which was weird, and he ninja slipped me a note while shaking my hand. It read, Ask her about the quick trip slushies. She doesn't believe me that they have sugar in them. So I asked her if she was having any soda, lemonade, tea, ice cream shakes, or slushies, and she told me like a light bulb had gone off in her head. Well, I have been drinking about 3 of the 48 ounce quick trip slushies every day for a while now. They're just so good, and they aren't food or drink, they're slushies, so they don't have any sugar in them, and don't need to record them. It was so hard to convince her that those are so full of sugar. It isn't even funny. But seriously, 3 a day on a type 2 diabetic, it was one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Story 20 a nursing home called 911 for a patient who was having difficulty breathing. When we arrived, a PA was standing in front of the patient, vigorously fanning the old lady with her hands. She looked at us and said, I'm giving her some oxygen because we couldn't find a portable low 2 tank and keeps flapping her arms. Remember, this is a physician assistant probably making 100000 a year. I informed her that she could stop now at my partner and I did our best to wait until we were outside to burst out laughing. Going off on a side tangent here. Some people don't handle stress well. I volunteer as an emergency first responder but one of the funniest cases I've seen of was out of uniform in an airport. A larger gentleman who suffered from cope had taken a six-hour flight. Upon getting through security, he had collapsed and was having difficulty breathing. The first person on scene to help the guy was a firefighter. I was second on scene, younger and smaller than the firefighter. I'm 6'3 and not skinny. This guy was just huge. So I'm letting him take lead as I run through making sure EMS is on the way, checking this guy's vitals, stabilizing his head and neck. Big guy went from conscious to unconscious quickly and fell straight down, and getting a history from his family. In the meantime, the firefighters kind of starting to panic a little. He may have been new or just the fact that he was out of uniform and not expecting it through him. Either way, as the man regains consciousness and I start running through a quick test, which involves me and the gentleman talking to each other and treating for shock, the firefighter tries to retake the guy's vitals. He fails to find a pulse. Understand, at this point, I am communicating with the patient. He's not completely lucid, but he is speaking to me and groaning. Having failed to find a pulse, 
the firefighter assumes this gentleman is in full-on cardiac arrest and begins to attempt to apply an AED to his chest. I say attempt because along with being large, this gentleman was somewhat hairy. Now, in any first aid course for anyone, then involves teaching one to use an AED. One of the first things you cover is that the razor in the kit is there in case you need to shave someone. The firefighter, having failed to realize that talking probably means the patient isn't in cardiac arrest and that he is having trouble getting a pulse because the patient is larger, then fails to shave the guy's chest. This leaves the patient with the two contact pads hanging off of his chest hair, but very much not in any way contacting his skin. While I've just started to realize what the firefighter was trying to do at that point, fortunately, an older woman arrives and identifies herself as a trauma nurse who are, by the way, just about the best people to have on your side. If something like this happens, she tells him to go talk to the family, takes lead, and everything goes smoothly from then until the airport. Medical folks show up and take over. Unfortunately, I'm having trouble not laughing the whole time at the image of the firefighter staring intently at an AED that can't possibly give him a reading on the condition of the now conscious and lucid patient. Older, even people who should know better sometimes lose it under stress. Story 21. Had a lady measure her baby's temperature by preheating the oven and putting one hand in front of it while the other hand was on the baby's forehead. She told the nurse her baby's fever was about 250 degrees. Lady, you either think you're the human torch or you don't understand how conduction works. Story 22. I had an old lady come in with a massive bleed in her brain. She was pretty much gone. I had to explain to her tearful son that there was nothing we could do. He said that he loved his mama and he'd give anything for her. So he asked us to give her his brain for a brain transplant. Ashley was left speechless for a minute and then had to spend another 20 minutes explaining why that was not possible. Story 23. Mom brought her kids to the ER after they were to all of their Halloween candy because they had tummy aches. They were still eating Reese's peanut butter cups when they were in the exam room. I had to explain to her that they need to cut back on the candy and she looked at me like I had three heads. Story 24. For almost a month, my friend had random pains. Bruises started showing up randomly. He looked ashen, and when we first thought was him being lazy was actually him not having any energy. Finally, his girlfriend got him to agree to go to the doctor who sent him to the ER where it took several doctors to figure out what was wrong, either because none of them had actually seen it in real life, or they didn't think someone could be that stupid. Quote the doctor, you have scurvy, eat a freaking orange. Story 25, who, I've got another one, inhaler technique. So we're told to always show a patient how to take an inhaler if they are new to them, and that we should check technique every so often. Yeah, yeah, you think, how hard can it be? Well, my senior once noticed that a patient was getting repeat prescriptions for an inhaler every week rather than every month. We brought her in to find out why. Oh, it just doesn't seem to work very well. I press it up to 50 times and it doesn't help. We were in shock over this. Salbutamol inhalers taken in excess, we're talking like 10 puffs taken in an asthma attack, can give you a thumping headache, a tremor, and a dry mouth. How is she taking 50 and not noticing? We asked to see the technique. Yeah, turns out she was spraying it onto her chest. Internal face bombs were had, and we educated her on how to take it properly. A PhD, isn't that kind of doctor? Please don't show me that rash. Story 26, during paramedic school, my teacher was a PA who told us a story of a lady that came into the clinic he was working at. She said she didn't feel well, Nothing but general fatigue and not feeling right. He had the nurse do a standard set of vitals and a blood glucose. Her glucose was extremely high, so he goes in to talk to her. He asked, has anyone ever told you that you have diabetes? She replied, yeah, a doctor said that I had that once and it took some medication for a couple of weeks and felt better. He then had to explain to her that diabetes doesn't go away after some medication. Story 27. I had the opposite happen to my wife. She was pregnant and had a thyroid nodule. We were concerned about how removal could affect the pregnancy due to changes in hormone levels and anesthetic during the surgery. We stated this concern quite clearly and in great detail. His response was that he will be operating on the neck and that it was nowhere near the baby. Thanks for answering a question we never had and ignoring ours. He was really pushing for surgery before delivery. We did not see him again. Story 28. I work in a hospital lab. Quite a few years ago, there was a patient who was under schedule for a semen analysis from one of our fertility doctors. The between the lines here is the patient was having some fertility problems. Patient presents us with a cup of urine. We explain that we need a semen sample, not a urine one. Confused why his first sample was rejected. He goes back to the private bathroom at the end of the hall. About half an hour later, 
He comes back with another urine sample, and that's when I literally had to have both the birds and bees talk with the man in his mid-30s and clue him in on the world of self-pleasure. This has actually happened twice now in my eight years, and I found out about another guy when I was talking to my manager about it. The second time I had a few thoughts. I could save these guys thousands of dollars by explaining how to have intimacy properly. Somehow it never came up in the office that the wrong fluid is being used. Story 30 I had to explain to a frantic mother that non-traumatic vaginal bleeding with abdominal cramps is normal in a 12-year-old. I tried to throw her a hint when I asked when the girl's last menstrual cycle was. She merely replied in hysterics. She doesn't have menstrual cycles. She's only 12. I'll leave the diagnosis to your imagination. Story 31 I'm a CNA at a nursing home. We got a new resident in and she had a huge bed sore in her, her tailbone region that had become infected and obsessed to the point that he probably could have fit a coke can inside the opening. It had to be cleaned, packed and have a wound pump attached to it every 12 hours. Turns out before she came to us, her family didn't think she needed any at home help. So they would go over in the morning, get her up, bathe, dressed, put a pop tart on the table for her get her in her wheelchair and go about their day. She was incontinent and would sit in the chair for 12 to 15 hours a day covered in her own urine and feces until they came back, wiped her off, and put her back in her bed for the night. Sitting all day in your own filth, it turns out, leads to bed sores. The day she was admitted to my facility, her family, my administrator and everyone were all talking in a room. They had introduced us and let her know I'd be taking care of her at night. From now on, she whispered to me that she needed to go to the bathroom and I had to kick out my boss and her family because her son insisted that she can just hold it. She was never able to get over the raging infection in her wound, and it eventually killed her. It was one of those situations where I honestly wish I could have looked them in the face and told them, you know, you're the one that killed your mother. Right, you killed her. Just as an update, yes, we tried to turn them in for elder abuse, but she was actually still sound of mind and realized what we were going to do. And so she recanted her story and said she had never told us anything like that. She didn't want to see her son in jail for what he did to her. So she went to her death telling people things had just gotten out of hand and she was too weak. Story 32. Paramedic here. Have informed numerous people that pouring Gatorade into the unresponsive diabetic's mouth is not a good idea. What you should do, call an ambulance. If they have a glucagon emergency kit, follow its instructions. Do not put anything in, on near or around their face. I've heard the powdered sugar and gums, etc., etc., but if you expect an ambulance within 20 minutes, just lie them on their side and wait. Drink the Gatorade yourself. You deserved it. You just say their friggin' life. Story 33. My mother, who worked as a pediatric nurse, she had a mother whose child was putting on a startling amount of weight. This was bad since the patient's mother was obese and had diabetes and they wanted to control weight gain for baby. So they went through the feeding schedule. Baby was due for a bottle during the checkup. The mother whips out a bottle during appointment. My mom is startled to see the milk is bright pink. She asks, why is the milk bright pink? The child's mother explains that her kid prefers the milk if it has strawberry quick mixed in and drinks more milk. The mom didn't get the connection between quick and weight gain. Told her. Don't feed your child the fetus, it makes them fat from the start. Story 34. I doc here. Just today I had to tell a patient that no, you should not attempt to continue wearing a contact lens that was dropped in the toilet. This is like a worse version of that eyeball licking trend from 2013, which actually, turns out was a hoax. Story 35. In a free medical clinic, I had to tell a mother that she should be brushing her four-year-old's teeth. The daughter came because her throat hurt after opening her mouth and using a tongue depressor to see her throat. The daughter squirmed like four-year-olds are prone to do, and the tongue depressor hit her gums. Pus flowed everywhere, and the child wound up having to be put on penicillin before having every last tooth pulled due to severe infection. You should start brushing your infant's teeth as soon as they start teething and do a gentle gum massage with the baby toothbrush before that. Use safe to swallow toothpaste before the child is 10. Let the child brush their own teeth as soon as they are able for practice and then have an adult brush them at a 45 degree angle toward the gums in small circles. Children should be supervised, brushing their teeth until they're at least 12 or longer if necessary. This occurred in Nicaragua, quite far from any major city, and wasn't reported because the mother did follow up and kept the appointment for extractions. The thought of brushing her daughter's teeth simply never rose. Before modern toothbrushes were invented, People used bones, porcupine quills, sticks, and chew sticks. The ancient Romans had toothbrushes as well. Yes, you should brush your pet's teeth. Pet toothpaste only. No fluoride. No, I didn't murder the mother. She was provided with six months worth of dental supplies for both of them and thoroughly educated on dental hygiene. Story 36. 
All right, now for the old switcheroo. My ex-mother-in-law was a pediatrician. However, her education was all from the 60s and 70s in Cold War Poland, and she hadn't practiced as a pediatrician for 30 years when our doctor was born. Like a lot of first-time parents, we read all the books, and the vast consensus at the time was that the only thing babies need is mother's milk. So we set ourselves up for that, and the baby is thriving after a couple of weeks with her doctor telling us everything is fine. Mother-in-law comes to visit, and of course, we're doing everything wrong. We can't hold the baby right. We're being too attentive. We're not being attentive enough. She's too warm. She's too cold. I think you expect a certain amount of that. But then she starts insisting on giving the baby sugared black tea in a bottle. I'm not the smartest guy on the planet, but I'm smart enough to let the wife and her mom settle this between them. Lots of screaming back and forth. Showed her the literature from our doctor about nursing. All the references in the baby books. Pulled down a couple of recent research articles but the crazy old battle axe didn't give up. Finally, I caught her after we foolishly left her alone with the baby for a couple of minutes, trying to force her to take a bottle with tea in it. She ordered my wife in a week, I will go back home, and then you can do whatever you want with the baby. In a level voice, I told her that's what you don't seem to understand. We can do whatever we want with the baby right now. Story 37 are not an MD but here's the story. Patient was a newly diagnosed diabetic who needed to be taught how to inject insulin. So the diabetes educator did the good all routine of taking an orange, drying up insulin, then injecting it into the orange that made the patient repeat it. Patient goes home, comes back in a week, and his blood sugar is out of control. They ask him if he's been taking his insulin and he goes, of course. So they decide to ask him to demonstrate how he injects insulin. The patient goes, sure. I just need an orange. At this point, I started a face palming hard because I know where this one is heading. But of course they got him an orange and a vial of insulin with the syringe. So the guy draws out the insulin correctly, takes the syringe, injects it into the orange, and then says, and then I ate the orange. At this point, I had to walk out because I nearly lost myself right there. Story 38. I once had a patient with a cancer diagnosis completely depressed about not being able to see their family anymore. I was confused because I had spoken with this individual spouse and extended family who seemed supportive. There wasn't any indication of family problems. It turns out this individual thought genetic and family history had meant something similar to contagious, leading them to the conclusion that one should stay away from loved ones lest it be spread through the family. That was one clarification. I was so happy to give to those wondering how such a misunderstanding is possible. Keep in mind that we ought not to judge. Not everyone has the benefit of a good education, nor is everyone part of a generation and culture that has always had medicine and science in their lives. Other times, language and jargon can be a barrier to understanding. I was not the physician that failed to communicate the issues effectively, but we were all glad that at least this problem could be easily dealt with.